conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this regular meeting of the Bader City Council. It is 6.02 p.m. on Thursday, May 12, 2022. Roll call. Casey Daly. Mr. Daly is working tonight. Andy Hall. Here. Ann McIntosh. Here. Samantha Lovelady. Here. Mike Parsons. Here. Mayor Shy. Also here. Pledge of allegiance. Ms. Lovelady. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the states of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor's report. <clears throat> The Wooden Park Playground, um, as everyone has probably noticed, it's open for play as of May Day morning, and we've seen lots of use. It's very exciting. Um, we still have some projects left to complete out there. The fencing, which we're going to um, get moving tonight, hopefully, um, finishing up some landscaping with some uh, silt dirt and whatnot, and some uh, grass seed to fix all the uh, bare dirt out there, um, the covered shelter, signage, and some tables. Um, working on all of that. Uh, McMurphy Park, there was uh, an at, our, another RCO grant application, which is what we use for Warden Park, um, is being prepared um, for a covered pavilion and some permanent vault toilets down there at the other park. Um, so I think there's going to be a presentation for council at the next meeting uh, regarding that. Parks Board um, is sponsoring a free document threading event on May 21st from 10 to 1 at Little Crane parking lot. So you can bring your sensitive things down there and get them shredded. The wastewater plant. Uh, the city is currently looking for funding towards engineering for the outfall diffuser replacement. So I believe it's been talked about a couple times before, but the um, outfall pipe that goes into Olaqua Creek that's physically in the water is in need of getting replaced. Um, and so they're talking about 100,000, 116,000 worth of engineering costs just to engineer a new outfall. Um, and then, of course, um, construction as well, maybe another half a million, um, plus the um, environmental studies and whatnot to actually work in the water um, to be pretty soon as well. So um, it's a project on the horizon, trying to, trying to find some funding for that. Um, the sooner we can get it going, the better. It was discussed at the beginning of the wastewater treatment plant program um, to do this work, but um, the environmental impacts that were taken, studies would have taken so long, um, it would have delayed the entire project. So they decided to break it into two back then to get our plant done and then work on the outfall separately. So. Uh, planning committee, uh, there's a vacancy. Mr. Uh, Mason Gall will be uh, stepping down at the end of his term at the end of the month. Um, so if there's anyone that's interested in the planning committee, uh, please uh, put them in touch with me or City Hall so that we could uh, potentially get them on the, on the committee. There's also an application form online. And May Day Festival. Thank you to the May Day Committee volunteers for another great year. Obviously, as most people were down there and saw that all the folks walking around town. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. Um, even though there was the threat of rain and then intermittent rain during the day, people still stuck around and had a good time. So good, good event. Council reports. Any members of the council have anything to report? Yes, I do. Go ahead, I want to put on the agenda for the next meeting okay. about the uh, the jail. Okay. I have problems with the jail. Sure. Any other council reports? I'd like to bring up that the negativity, which is kind of common the negativity on the Facebook regarding the project that we all went out of our way to come into a special meeting and to listen and approve. And I think we were all excited about because we all voted it in. Um, and then the uh, builder had some issues without us being involved with it. And so he's not doing it. So um, we all want the city to grow and there's a lot of things going on and stirring the pot 
doesn't help anybody. So if you have any questions, call City Hall or ask one of us, but just getting on Facebook and saying that the city council doesn't want the city to grow is a bunch of <clears throat> not good stuff. <clears throat> Malarkey. Malarkey. Who Thank you. How is that? Who is it? Who is it? Whatever it is, it's disinformation. And we don't want that out. Right. Well, and it's true, you know, that the council planning committee and the city can, can you know, approve projects, but, um, you know, it's up to the developer when it finally is said and done whether it's something that they want to expend their finances on, right? It's, it's their livelihood. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's their call, not ours. There's other people that there's other property owners down there that can do stuff with their properties also, but we don't see anything down there being done. It's because we're the leaders and the leaders always get the short end of the stick. Welcome to the club. Yeah. 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 I've been there. <laughs> different seat to be in for sure. Other council reports? Yep. Hearing none, um, agenda approval. We do have two additions to the agenda. Um, first, council to consider resolution 05-2022, authorizing the purchase of real property. Um, and then um, second, council to consider awarding the contract for the Warden Park fencing project to Express Iron Works. Any other additions? That, that's the, uh, the fence. The fencing. That's part of the fence. Okay. It's a great time to talk about it. Okay. Well, for one. No, I don't, I don't mean now, but when we get there. Damn it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the city council meeting agenda for May 12, 2022, with the additions of the two things the mayor just spoke. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the agenda with two additions. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second, uh, Mr. Lovelady. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Maybe. Maybe. Maybe yes or no? No. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Um, minutes approval. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for April 28th, 2022. We have a motion by Ms. Lovelady to approve the meeting minutes. Do we have a second? I'll say the minutes. Second by Mr. Parsons. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. <clears throat> Voucher approval. I make a most motion to approve the vouchers for 1st of May at $59,570.79. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the vouchers as written. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Ms. Lovelady. Discussion? Not yet. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 No. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Um, special report for Lewis County Sheriff's Department. Good evening. Uh, the uh, April law enforcement totals in favor. Um, during the month of April, there were a total of 390 citizen contacts, a total of 25 calls for service, four of which were when a dedicated deputy was in the city of Vader. Um, we had 19 traffic stops with one infraction and one criminal citation. There were no custodial arrests, either felony or misdemeanor. Questions? Thank you. Thanks. Um, right, moving on to city business. Item number one, um, executive session for RCW 4231101B versus, um, regarding real estate matters. Um, I'd like to excuse the city council to the back office just a few minutes to discuss something uh, before we re-adjourn this meeting. <clears throat> so I will uh, vote to it. Can we, can we do a motion to start the meeting? We can, absolutely. Well, definitely at this time. Sure, why not? I'll make a motion to start the executive session at 611 or 612 for as long as it's needed. We have a motion by Ms. Lovelady to excuse the executive session at 612 p.m. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Ms. McIntosh. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. 
Any opposed, motion carries. Thank you. We will be back momentarily. <coughs> This conference will now be recorded. The reconvenience meeting of the Bader City Council at 6.27 p.m. after the executive session. Moving on to city business item number two, council to consider outsourcing city payroll services to a private company, resolution 06-2022. So this has been um, thrown around City Hall a little bit for a while now. Um, as most of you know, um, City Hall handles its own payroll. Um, so city clerk, administrators, deputy clerk, um, they sit there, they go through payroll, calculate everyone's numbers, uh, calculate taxes, file like, all the different state agencies, and on and on and on. And they spend quite a few hours a month working on uh, doing those payroll services. Um, we also have expenses related to the time clock that's in the, on the wall out here that the city hall uses. We have an annual fee. Yeah, there's an annual fee associated with it. So there's some real cost would be a um, the equipment as well as the hours that we, that we pay our employees to do this. Um, there are payroll service companies, private companies that do this. Um, it's fairly standard for governments, for cities and other government ent entities uh, to outsource their um, payroll services. It frees up um, the city hall employees to do what we want them to do, which is you know, our government work um, versus um, spending month, hours every month working on payroll. Um, the other advantage of the payroll services is that um, every year there's an annual, um, the annual W-2s for taxes, our employees have to do, calculate those. Um, this company would do it for us. Um, this company also offers um, automatic deposits for our employees' um, paychecks. The city doesn't offer that right now. Um, a, a variety of different um, options. And when it comes down to it, um, in your packet, I believe there's a, a table where Diane calculated in there, or was it just in the email? In the packet, where she calculated very modestly the number of hours a month that um, that the deputy and the, and the clerks put into um, calculating payroll, um, and then also the annual reviews as well, um, versus outsourcing it to this particular company that we found, ADP, very big in the industry, um, at $146 a month um, for a new time clock and for their payroll services. Um, you know, $146 a month is, does not pay for that many hours of, uh, of our clerk's time. Now, for the clerks, is the seven hours monthly, is that already added in, or is that what we've been at? That's okay. already, you do seven hours, probably. Which That's what I'm saying. You just you're getting still paid during the day, but you're just seven hours calculated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So it, it would it would increase our annual budget. Right. Our expenses would go up the hundred, almost one hundred fifty dollars a month um, above what we're currently spending. But it's as if we're giving our employees another you know, day. Yeah. Whole nine hours. Yeah, another nine hours a month to do government work. Versus um, calculating payroll every single month. Something has uh, hardware that that you install and just you just input it. Thirty minutes, you're done. It does everything. How about you answer that, Diane? How many? How because did, how I see it advertised all the time. Yeah. Right. We do not have payroll soft. Mm -hmm. We have manual software. I mean, a manual payroll that was put together by Jill. She did a great job doing it. <laughs> that has a number of spreadsheets where you put in the time and you put in that spreadsheet gives you the information that you put into this other spreadsheet and then you take it from that spreadsheet and you put it into this spreadsheet and then you put it onto the main federal spreadsheet individually by employee then you get your monthly total or quarterly total and then you take your monthly total and you pay the taxes but then you have to have another spreadsheet that disperses it into like I get paid out of seventy percent comes from the current fund, thirty percent from the city, um, fifty percent of hers comes from the city, where and fifty comes from. So everybody has a different breakdown. John gets twenty five percent, twenty five percent, and fifty percent. So you have to account for all that stuff. So every long short about the 
the of the hard work. You buy one time fee. It's always there, and it's it, that you don't have to do all that hello balloon with the spreadsheets. It does it for you, but you still have to pay your taxes. Right. So I have to issue with W two, and you sell. You can't do the automatic deposit. All those things we talked about. And you pay, and you pay the tax when you say pay the taxes. There's different um, online sources that you go to to do that. And you have to calculate it. Yeah, you put it in. IRS, you pay <clears throat> to the retirement people, you pay the medical people. Quarterly, we pay um, L and I, employment security, and <clears throat> medical people. And then annually, you have to account for everything and you have to submit all your stuff to IRS and create W 2. And there's another one coming out here really soon. Well, they, they, they had it out, but then they canceled it. Yes, and we were set up to just pay family medical. Yeah. Um, so they, we were set up, actually took it out in January, then they said, oh, we don't have to take it out. So we gave it back. I make a motion that we approve resolution number 06 2022. I the first and approve resolution 06 2022. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second on this level. I was going to say. I have some comments about it too. Uh, calculating all this out yesterday, I was asking questions to AP. Um, we can get this without doing your time clock. You just basically use our same time clock. Often we do pull the hours off and submit it on their online format, and then they take it from there. Um, and that would take the $90 a month off. So you'd be talking, you know, $70 month for them to process payroll. And also one of those charges is to actually mail the W-2s and I'm like, they can send up the W-2s here. They don't have to be officially mailed. Um, it's great if they send them to the IRS for us and all that stuff, but there's some things that we can massage around so that we're not paying as much here. Um, you know, each piece we can take on what we want. So what's the time pot cost us now? It feels like we just renewed the annual three hundred dollars. Yeah, I remember that too. The three hundred dollar number. Yeah. So we don't own that. We we own basically we only what we're paying for is a um report. So we can keep that, not have a thousand ninety one expense, and are, are the other numbers still good? And, then, and what about price increase? Well, if you see here, it says that on this first year, they're giving us a $283 credit. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that won't be in subsequent years. So we're still looking at $70, $71 a month for them to process. But will they give it that, that without the time clock? Yes. Okay. And this is the best one? Yes. Wait, I can tell you. Uh, when I was at Freightliner for 18 years, they had AGP, and it was excellent. Yeah. I mean, that's for a long period. They're, they are well known and very cost effective. Yeah. Cost is what I'm talking about. Right. And I downloaded several of them. It'd be hard for these guys to compete with it. And it would free up more time for the other employees to do other projects. Well, like branch. Lance. Yeah. Sure. Yes, Without the, we can manually enter the employee hours um, you know, and, and save over half of this cost. Cost that could be a very. You're talking about eight hundred dollars a year instead of you know seventeen hundred. And that's the best offer they can give, seeing how we don't have that many right. people on there. Yes. Yeah, they calculated the number of employees that we had. Right. It is scalable, so it's easy to get employees at some point. So is the proposal that you did, Mike, with with the time clock or without? What's that? Are we going to uh, go for approval without the time clock? No, we just do it with the time clock. We can always take it off. Or we could do the other way around to approve it without the time clock if it becomes too. Um, too intense to input those hours. We could always add that package on later. Yeah. Could start low and if we just paid for it, time pop, right? Yeah, a couple of like in March, I think that we paid to do the contract again. Um, and we're talking about if we start this, we're not going to start to like July. 
Mm -hmm. So that we've already got a half a year done here completely, and then we'll start the second half of that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> send your motion. Oh, we send my motion? Yeah, because Rich Emma changed it. All right, I rescind my motion and remotion for resolution 06 2022 with the Thank removal you. of the time bomb. So, motion by Mr. Sparks and to approve resolution 06 2022 for the payroll services only, not to include the time clock. Do we have a second? I second. Second of Mr. Hall. <laughs> Further discussion. All those in favor of approving resolution 06 2022 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Yes. No cares. <laughs> Council to moving on to item number three. Council to consider extending the <laughs> Cascade Industrial Services contract. For the city hall and shop roofing resolution 07 2022. Uh, I mentioned this at, in, at the, in the mayor's report at the last meeting that uh, because of the odd weather, the uh, roofing company that we had contracted with they re requested that uh, we change the estimated completion date to the end of June, uh, which this um, amendment I does do. July. So same contract, just a little longer, so they can get it done when it's dry. Who paid for the lawyer? Who paid for the lawyer? Did we do the contract? We did. Why? They requested it. They should have paid for it. Why are we paying for it? We shouldn't have paid for it. <clears throat> How much? Didn't they tell us that we didn't even have to have the resolution because they are decided they were not going to charge the money this year? And um, so that was the only thing about the amendment was adding that. Who uh, we were talking about now? I'm very confused. Yeah, I have to talk to you. So the Cascade Industrial okay, Cascade on, the, industry. on, the, on the agenda, I don't remember. Right. Um, okay. um, we have the defense people. No, no, this is the city garage. Okay. Oh, my question still stands. Yeah. Well, by default, we run all of our um, contracts by the, not quite all of them. Sometimes we, when we have a contract, we can send it to our MR, not MR, it's the RMSA. RMSA. RMSA, um, who is our insurance company, mm -hmm. and they will review. We, more simple things for free for us. And so on the more simple things, we do run them, run that by them, just save a few dollars. Um, on this one, I, did we ask Jennifer to edit this one for us or did we just do it ourselves? No, we yeah, we're just we're the sure okay. on it. I wasn't, I wasn't exactly sure, that's several. It's kind of standard procedure to have the attorney to make sure right. uh, all the contracts are uh, set up right that way. They should at least pay half, if not all, because they requested it, we didn't. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 07 2022. Do have a motion by Mr. Barson to approve resolution number 07 2022. Is there a second? I'll second. Second, Ms. Lovely. Um, I guess I could make note of that. Yeah. And if, in the future, if a if a, uh, a contractor asks um, for an extension or a change to the contract, we can let them know that that would be that would be on them to pay for. I know um, we did that recently with the garbage franchise for community waste and recycling. Um, he asked for the contract that expires at the end of this year to be updated with some changes that he required, and we let him know that he would have to pay for those. And doesn't well, that doesn't that have to go through a another resolution 
for us to they would have yeah. needed, they would have needed to do that yeah. we're going to ask and, people to and it would have had public hearings and whatnot because we're going to raise utility rate fees. Right. Um, yeah. so we so we so we let him know all that stuff and as you can see you have not seen an updated contract from him so but so noted any other discussion all those in favor of approving resolution 07 2022 for the extension for the completion date on the city hall roof and shop roof, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to resolution, council to consider resolution 05 2022, authorizing the purchase mm -hmm. of real property. <clears throat> that resolution is in your package right here. Um, so this would be for the purchase of well, the official addresses, I believe, zero Main Street in Vader, um, as there is no building there, zero. Um, but it is block 56, lots eight through 14. Um, that is the legal description. Um, the purchase price is $88,000. Um, you've all seen the purchase sale, sale agreement. Um, it has not changed to the authorizing re resolution that would um, give the city the ability to begin testing the soil to um, start an escrow account in the amount of $3,500 for the seller. And we can start moving on this. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 05 of 2022. A second. Did you actually say it? Can you read the entire read thing? The whole thing. <laughs> one that I picked, Joe. And really? And then the location. You guys open your mouth. I know. My I make a motion to approve resolution number 05 2022, the resolution <clears throat> of the City Council of the City of Bader, <laughs> authorizing the purchase of a certain parcel of real property, authorizing the mayor to execute the purchase and sale agreement and implement, implement this resolution, including authorizing the mayor to undertake due diligence, designate escrow agent, review title, deposit earnest money, and complete the purchase price for the property on block 56, lots 8 through 14. Thank you. And I second the motion. Seconded by Mr. Paul. Further discussion? Well, I'm not going to forward it. It's a lot of money still. <clears throat> yeah, it is. It is. Um, you know, this will we'll use um, the ARPA money, which is the money from the American Relief. American Relief. What's the piece in for protection? Protection Act. I don't know. COVID relief money. Um, everyone got it, including the cities. Um, the city, the uh, Vader, got about one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Um, up to this point, I think we've spent nine, maybe ten thousand on the tractor. Um, mm -hmm. This money is designed for um, to give back to the community. It's this designed for the community. Okay. Um, and so that's what uh, what this property would be for. And we couldn't get grants for it and use the COVID money for like low income families that are having problems with like sewage. Or whatnot, because I'm pretty sure they'd like to have monetary help more than they would a community center. Let me just say, there is a new grant that is being offered to do that specific thing. Oh, yeah. Even with the purchase price, we still have hundred thousand dollars saved, ninety maybe eighty thousand that has not been spent. That can be designated for other things. So we're not using all of it. We're just using right. But, part of it. but still, how how long is that going to last? There's a lot of needy families here. But, you know, we can go through that. Well, you you should put for the proposal of some sort for that. There's so many of that. Right. Then also <clears throat> there is a requirement with that that if you give assistance to people paying their bills, they have to prove they were affected by something. 
Did they lose a job? Did they, whatever? It can't just be somebody that goes, I'm not paying my bill, and then we give them money to pay their bill. Well, I know that. I'm so, saying a lot of them, I'm pretty sure, could come up with food. Okay. So, I mean, and we can do that. We offered that last year or 2020, mm -hmm. and I think we had two people that filled up the paperwork <clears throat> that we were able to help. I never heard it, anything about it, so that's why we haven't had two. We need better better advertisements. And then we did the um, little 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 fall flute. little fall flute with the with the cares money that we got originally, so that everybody in the town benefits, businesses and Employees. I mean, citizens. Citizens, thank you. Further discussion, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving resolution 05 2022, the authorizing. The purchase of blocks 56, lots 8 through 14. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the last item of business, company consider awarding the contract for the Work Park fencing project to Express Ironworks. Um, also on your packet are the <coughs> is the agenda bill that discusses the bid process, the amount of bids we received. <coughs> And all of the bids received um, to be for <clears throat> the four foot tall um, black vinyl coated chain link fence, 385 feet long, including the 12 foot swing vehicle maintenance gate in the back of the park. Um, the, we received six bids. Um, the lowest bid was from Express Ironworks um, for $15,577.10, which includes the which includes tax. Um, you can see the bill of materials matches what the other companies were also offering. Um, for every local company at a map line. Um, this, these uh, funds would be two thirds, roughly a little over two thirds, I believe, is paid for out of the RCO grant that we got for Warden Park, and the other one third of the cost um, is coming from refunds that the city council originally uh, approved. Wow. 75%. So it's 25%. So 75% comes from grant funds, 25% comes from the city refunds. Um, and this is the this is um, the safety fence that goes around the back. This will keep the children from running into the alley, into the side street. Can I speak now? Absolutely. Uh, okay. I make oh. I have some things to say about this one. Okay. The actually need a better set of plans because I couldn't read the damn thing. But uh, the fence <clears throat> I thought was supposed to be surrounded the playground, the whole thing to keep the little ones from getting out in the streets in the front of it. It does. Well, it goes. It goes. So on the far north side of the park, there's a wood fence there already. <clears throat> this fence would go north to south from the wooden fence all the way behind where the old swing set was mm -hmm. behind the basketball court mm -hmm. behind the playground all the way along the alley and then turn and go to the east towards the current parking lot and that's where so, it ends so yeah so it framed it would frame the whole park in so the only place that um you could leave the park is from the front and so the idea is that you know if you have your your parents go there or something like that. Um, they'd be sitting there in on the picnic tables up front. And if any kids were going to leave, they have to go past you to leave the park. I think we need uh, another one on the front because there was nothing but dog poop all in that park, and they were bringing the dogs there for the little kitties to play in. I've heard a couple times, yeah, that there's been some waste there um, from animals. We need to get one of those poop bags. Yes, fine, so Jan. Yeah, there, right. there is, yeah, there is one there that was taken down during construction, an animal waste pickup station. Um, it was taken down, so we need to put it back up. And the dogs, because it's a health hazard for the children, because they could get worms. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could definitely add some signage that no dogs in the play area or not, something. This is not a dog, dog park. Right. But I still think that the, we need to 
something in the front that uh, that encloses it in for more of a safety reason and to keep the animals out. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that was definitely, definitely that wasn't in the in the original design. I can see the value of that. I'm not sure how functional that would be. I mean, have to just have a new date. If you kept the kept that design where it fenced in the back of the park, and then you added somehow you segregated the playground separate. I don't know. If you put it, it's a whole other a whole other where the basketball kind of court habit. is, and then bring it on down to where you're cutting off at. That would be uh, perfect. Yeah, we can do that. <clears throat> Wonder if it would be cost effective through this and then do a amendment later. Just so we get yeah. that yeah. added on. We have a we have a a comment from the chairman of the park board and resident playground expert. So originally we did talk about putting some fencing up in there, but there was also at the time when we were designing the project and going through the grants and everything, there was a funding issue even just with that much more. I know it doesn't seem like it's that much more right, right along the front, but um, it has been, it was in our notes and everything too to keep an eye on that once it was done and if the need, which you know, there, we knew that there could be the potential of a need for that to go across and add like a really nice greenway in the week mm -hmm. so that it can get lost at the end of the day. Um, that would be another project that we definitely can raise. Well, we've already been raising some funds mm -hmm. and stuff too. And so that is something that has been on my personal radar to keep mm -hmm. in mind as well. Yeah, because we're, we're liable. Yeah. And I'm just could see some kid run out there and they get run over or. Yeah, bringing well, a dog in and they get bit. Well, when well in the dog part, definitely. I think I have to relook at our design again. This was something else I was looking at. We had, after we took down the dog tag, I know we have the big park pole sign that's on the bathroom. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that I definitely wanted to bring something onto that side because most people are entering on that side. Right. They don't really see that sign unless they walk through the bathrooms. Right. So it's really good to make sure we have that coverage. <clears throat> and um that is something because we do we still have signs that we need to purchase we still have the garbage cans we need to purchase um so a sign about the dogs being on leash not in the play area i didn't think about saying not in the play area on it, you have to but we yeah i i've learned i'll say what i've learned later um, <laughs> You have to be but, direct. Yeah, it, you, do, you have to be very, very specific. And That's it's really right. frustrating because you think there's some common sense at some point. <laughs> I don't know where you've been living at, but. <laughs> but that'll be the nice version of what I heard you say. So, um, but yeah, I haven't put on a lot of high signs, and so I've been thinking about that and keeping an eye. I had noticed my son and I had cleaned up some dog poop yeah. in there as well. And I've let John know too, so he's still making a point to look and make sure. It seems like it's always happening in a certain spot. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's either a specific person who's bringing it in or there's a dog that's getting out all the time. We have mm -hmm. dogs that wander constantly. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's dogs that wander the, the, yeah. the streets. And, and uh, some of them are not very nice dogs. That's yeah. another reason why I was commenting about the fence. So, I mean, something too that I would like to do if we end up adding that fence along the area, I mean, there really isn't a good way to. It takes some creative thinking for along the pavilion section to really have a truly enclosed park, mm -hmm. probably. However, um, I would like it to be more than just another fence that's put up with gates. I would like it to actually look like an, an official entrance. Mm -hmm. really like an archway or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Have a harbor. To so, um, like I said, great idea and it's good to make sure that we know that and that it's definitely not something that's going to drop you off to it. So yeah. Well I, for the amount they're charging we should just throw that in for free. <laughs> you would think you would think but. I actually went through I thought for these prices like you know what could we what would it, what does it really cost to build this thing? You know, and I went to some of the home improvement store websites and I started pricing oh, the chain link fence and then 200 posts and the concrete and the caps and all this stuff. And it was, it was $10,000. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's like, okay, well, there's ten thousand dollars worth of parts, and then the rest of this is labor. That's not too bad. Well, it means that we don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I don't have to do it. <laughs> well, I was just gonna comment and ask uh for volunteers to make maybe like a, a little a wooden barrier in the front. Mm -hmm. I think well, maybe that would be a, dim a temporary fence until you have what you want. Yeah. 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 Yes. Ask for donations for, for, for with material too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, folks are willing to donate material and labor. Um, and we now even have after May Day, we have our little donation store that's up there for parts and stuff like that too. And we're doing the fundraise the, the books. I right. still have to stop, but twenty books that are for sale. Um, Always donations. Right. But you can even get online if someone wants to, and they can pay for a donation online for parts also. So there's lots of options. We also have um, REIT money that can be designated for that since it is a capital improvement. Yeah. My preference definitely would be to, to approve the, this part of the fence project, get this up there, that, that would keep them from the going to the back and the side road for now. And then um, we could definitely look at adding on that other section somehow figuring out a design where the playground itself you know the chip area right. is protected from animals right i'll make the motion that we award the contract for the warden park fencing project to express ironworks inc we have a motion by mr parsons to approve contract awarding to express ironworks to the second i'll second it second it was lovely discussion I don't know. <laughs> all right, hearing none, all those in favor of approving Express Ironworks as the fencing contractor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That's the end of city business. Public comment. Can I ask you a question, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just was, was looking at, <laughs> I always think outside the box. Well, and but you're trying to make a box. You know, when you're, you're, when, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when you're sitting down and you're designing, you know, he's dead. Right. when you sit down and you design this, you try to think of everything. Right. But then someone throws a dog at it and you realize I didn't think about dogs. Yeah. You know, so you're kind of. A no dog time would be good so far. So it takes yeah. some observations, but that's fine tune the project. Obviously. Is there cameras on yeah. that thing up there? Not yet. Uh, Kelly Shy, 629th Street, and I am here to, as a Lions Club representative, <clears throat> to just remind everybody, Wednesday, May 29th, we have the circus coming onto the school property. I'm sorry, May 25th, I said 29th. May 25th, Wednesday, May 25th, we have two time, uh, two show times, one at 5, one at 7.30. It's first come, first serve. Um, and it's supposed to be really awesome. The help, uh, If we know that we're going to have a group that would like to see the Big Top come up, uh, go up and have a tour and meet the animals and everything, I you let me know. And I'm coordinating with other schools and everything right now to see if there's interest for them to come as well. And at 9 30, you can show up and go give a group, give a group tour. Um, the, the morning of, sorry, yes, the morning of the 25th, not the 25th. <laughs> um, it says at 4 p.m., they open up and the pony ride, spoon <clears throat> bounce, giant slide face painting. They have concession stands and t shirts, and the box office will open. And then the uh, shows are at, like I said, 5, five and 7.30. The tickets are $7 for children ages 2 to 12 <coughs> and seniors 65 and up. And um, otherwise, everybody else is $12. And the um, percentage, the, the funds that we're raising from it, it goes to the Vader Alliance Club. And, you know, most of you already all know that we do the Thanksgiving and Christmas food baskets and, and we do the harvest festivals and everything and the Easter egg hunts and stuff too. So that's that stuff that helps us pay to do that and we try to have 
as many briefings as we can as well. $12, $12 is the advanced purchase price. Yes, it is the advanced uh, purchase price on the day up. If you don't buy your tickets until you show up that day, it goes up. The adult tickets will be $15 and the child senior tickets will be $8. So it's $2 more for the adults and $1 more for the children and seniors. And we also had some very gen generous community members who also paid for all 22 kids to get a free ticket to go to the circus at Cruz. So we had Tim over at Summit Sheds and then we had uh, Councilwoman Samantha Love Lady help finish up with uh, getting the remaining eight children covered as well. So mm -hmm. thank you. Now, I'm just guessing because you're talking about um, the cost for the pony ride, the all the other stuff is separate from the entrance. Yes. So anything else outside of the tickets, which the ticket only covers the big top, to my understanding. Everything else is <clears throat> kind of like the the carnival. Yeah. And I don't remember. It sound sounded like there was something about cash. I don't. I think you needed to make sure you was it cash only. I, I don't know if it was cash only. It sounded sound like there was a couple of spots, like maybe t shirts you might be able to buy with the card, maybe, but I would just plan on being, having cash. So. That's a great, uh, great fundraiser for the Lions Club. And like she was saying, Lions Club is a lot of free, free activities and giveaways for the community mm -hmm. during the holidays and throughout the year. And they've also submitted the support of the parks over the years. So anything that we can do to help the Lions Club comes right back and helps the city and, and, and the citizens here. And I also have a coupon here too, one per household, dollar off for free pony rides. I also have coloring sheets. So if kids want to color it and bring it into pony rides, it gives them a dollar off their pony ride as well. I don't know, it says something about a contest, but I don't know what the contest details yet. I haven't gotten that far in the workbook. <laughs> but and our tickets are for sale at Little Crane, J and G's grocery. It says Lions Club, but it also needs it was supposed to say uh, here in City Hall and uh, Frank's Bar in Winlock and Cedar Village IGA in Winlock. Does the Lions Club have a place for donations for the City Hall or the Uh officially, no, but we can. Or you can oh, yeah. want to donate money to make yeah. a jar. Yeah, if that's okay. A second jar would be a better yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, we can set something like that up. I just wanted to give it a mm -hmm. place. <clears throat> Maybe we'll talk to Jason about putting one in the store. Right now you are at home. Talk to my door and I will bring you over to Anita. <laughs> Anita is also mm -hmm. another place yeah. too at my at Little Crane. So between yeah. the two of us, um, and then we'll set work on setting up something right here. Mm -hmm. I know they do a jar around Christmas for all the toys and stuff. Mm -hmm. for yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because that usually helps. And and I I see a finger tapping. So I just want to thank everybody. <laughs> <laughs> did I over? Uh, did I want to go over my screen? I didn't have to. So. <laughs> I have a button in the bar. Oh, Steve. Yeah. 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 But, all right. Uh, elected official comments. Yeah, uh, I just, one thing I wanted to add to the sheriff from here, so I did talk to the fellow who reported the stolen gas. He doesn't really have it on the camera. He, saying, he doesn't want any repercussions from whoever was doing it. He, just, he really doesn't know who did it. He said that because he's kind of paranoid. But that was on ninth and E, I believe, is where the gas was stolen. So, well, we all. Yeah, I, I talked to the fellow, and there is no camera. He doesn't know who did it. He made he made that made that part of it up because he didn't want anybody coming after him, whoever was doing it. We uh, <clears throat> we also had Rick um, Rick Cruz's boat got stolen out of his driveway <clears throat> Monday night or Monday afternoon around five o'clock and Monday night, the Kelso PD called them because they got stuck towing it or something. So we got his boat back, but um, 
They took it right out of his driveway. Did he cancel, did he cancel people to get it? No. No. And he lives uh, straight across the street from me. Well, I, I know the gas thing has been going on for some time. It happened to us. And it's a bright red boat, too. Yeah. The gas thing has been an ongoing issue. So there is somebody around here that's been hitting gas. When they, when, what they do is they see something, an unlocked tank that's easy accessible. That's what happened to me. I had my pickup truck parked a certain way facing the road. So they saw, oh, that's a pickup. They didn't have a, uh, one of those release caps. So they just came in and helped themselves, left, left the cap off, just like what happened to the fellow over there. So it's somebody that, that sees it as a matter of opportunity. I mean, since I put the locking cap on, I haven't had any trouble. Plus, I part, parked the vehicle a different way. <clears throat> but be aware, there is somebody yeah. around town. It seems like when we're that, gas prices go up, yeah. you know, it, it, it triggers that. that triggers response. that, yeah. Folks probably can't afford their own. And so. I went and filled all my gas cans for my lawnmower for the next month or two and had to hire a, an armored truck to take it home for me. <laughs> Uh, I just couldn't do it myself. Didn't feel yeah. safe, especially as a council member. That was the biggest flag. Yeah. <laughs> Any other elected official comment? Yeah, I have a just an ignorant question here. Um, is there a way to, like, make an ordinance or something that if you hit somebody with their dog over there? Uh, we could have a, you mean at the park? Yes. Yeah, we could, um, part, the park board definitely could make a policy and the council, the council could make a policy. You know, no dogs in the playground or something like that. And we don't have a dog leash on this law already. It doesn't have to be on the leash. So. Yeah, but no dogs in the actual playground. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's doable. Yeah. Yeah, we can we dog haters. I have the dogs. Like I'm saying, they want us. Poop haters. Yeah. yeah. And don't blame the dog. It's the owner. Yeah. Pick up your poops. Well, just, I, I My dog poops, poops and unfortunately, yeah. I pick it up. It's a nice, soft space. I know. Pick up the little cat box. That's yeah, what I'd be more minutes. worried about. Yeah, the cats are a whole different issue. Yeah, it's a real big issue. It says when we just had any sign. I said, I, I dog doesn't read the sign. <laughs> Apparently, the owners won't either. <laughs> All right, any other like to comment? All right, we're done. Meeting adjourned at 7 09 p.m.